untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a blue red mill deck of all things and it's voted on by my supporters on Patreon built around Invoke Calamity. I've tried a few different shells with Invoke Calamity but this blue red mill deck was by far the most successful one. The new 5 mana instant from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty lets us cast up to 2 instant and or sorcery spells with total mana value 6 or less from our graveyard and our hand without paying their mana costs and then we exile everything afterwards. So in this blue red mill deck where we've got a ton of instants and sorceries we can get a nice value from invoke calamity especially when it comes to replaying or key mill cards being maddening cacophony at two mana can mill for eight unless we kick it in which case for six mana we can mill half of the opponent's library around it up and then there's Tasha's Hideous Laughter at 3 mana, exiling cards from the opponent's library until that player has exiled cards with total mana value 20 or more, so against low curve decks can be incredibly effective. So these two we can replay with our Invoke Calamity alongside the other instants and sorceries which include removal and card draw. Then we also have the full playset of Dual Strike which we can foretell for 2 mana to later cast for a single red to copy the next instant or sorcery spell we cast with mana value 4 or less. So that's another way to double dip on Cacophony and Hideous Laughter. And once we cast 2 or 3 copies of Hideous Laughter it's usually game over so that's why replaying them out of the graveyard with Invoke Calamity is so powerful. Then looking at the rest of the deck, the other mill card is the full playset of Ruin Crab, which with Landfall will mill the opponent for 3. Then we've got Frostbite alongside some Snow Lands to deal 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker unless we control 3 or more Snow Permanents, in which case we can deal 3 damage instead. Then we've got 2 copies of Thundering Rebuke dealing 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker at sorcery speed as well as the full playset of Expressive Iteration, usually something we want to play starting turn 3 before playing the land for the turn as a nice 2 for 1. Then at 3 mana, besides Hazy Slafter, we've got the full playset of Crush the Weak as another card we can foretell, and then later cast for a single red to deal 2 damage to each creature, potentially exiling them as well, which can be relevant against some creatures in standard, like the Kami of Transience. And then finally at 5 mana we also have 2 copies of Burn Down the House, which can deal 5 damage to each creature and each planeswalker, or make 3 1 1 double tokens that deal 1 damage to any target when they die. So those are all instants and sorceries we can also replay with Invoke Calamity. And then the mana base of course needs to support a quadruple red card on turn 5, which is not the easiest, which is why we only have the one snow-covered island, alongside only two copies of Evolving Wilds, despite being quite synergistic with the Ruin Crab. Then seven snow-covered mountains, we've got more snow lands with the Volatile Fjord, which enters the battlefield tapped and makes blue and red. And then we've got a whole host of dual lands with the Snarl, the Pathway and a Storm-Carved Coast. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Some good early interaction, Cacophony to later replay with Calamity. And we're off to the races. Probably fine to foretell. Could play my blue source in case we draw expressive iteration. But I might need more snowlands in play. For Frostbite, on the other hand, there's also the Snarl to worry about, which requires us to have a basic in hand. Dockside Chef, I'm happy to rebuke here. Could also try and crush it instead. I guess we could be patient and just take one. Get the tap land out of the way. Might have to fetch an island in case we draw a Hideous Laughter, so we have double blue. Opponent does nothing. And then we'll see what we draw. Our iteration is excellent. And then we'll grab another iteration, play a tapped Snowland. So we'll have our double blue covered for Hideous Laughter. And we can play Pathway on Red for Calamity. No, we're not under any pressure really. Could see end of turn deadly dispute. Alright, Chef sacrifices itself. Could see a planeswalker here or Turgrid's lantern. Not the quickest win condition. But we don't have a lot of 
permanence to uh, sacrifice to it, so it's going to deal three over and over. Okay, what's next? Probably want to wait to kick Maddening Cacophony. So for now I could go for another iteration. And hit his laughter in hand, plus I could play one, although that means not having Quadruple Rat for Calamity. But I guess there's no great alternative. And we'll find another red source eventually. And it's possible that double hideous laughter plus cacophony is enough to win the game. Although we did get rid of some expensive cards like Blood on the Snow and Spider Queen. Alright, it's gonna be the Midnight Sky, 5-5, five, five. not easiest to kill with Crush the Weak. But Rebuke plus Crush the Weak could get there. Burn down the house also. And then if we can exile it with Crush the Weak, they don't get anything back. So Rebuke, Crush the Weak. Could foretell another Crush the Weak. Seems fine. Still interested in kicking the Maddening Cacophony. And then Calamity can replay Hideous Laughter and Cacophony potentially, so we'll see what next turn brings. Possible that just playing both is fine. Down to 10. Opponent can get back a Creature or Planeswalker here. Goes for Disciple to make me discard. Yeah, given that we have double Calamity that we can now cast, I don't feel bad playing this and Hideous Laughter. And then a Calamity next turn should do it. Seven cards remaining. Unless they've got more discard effects. I'll happily go down to seven. Disciple discards Burn Down the House. Opponent passes and Invoke Calamity. Should do it here. Go for Hideous Laughter times two. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's featuring a lot of removal. So if we're up against the creature deck, we can buy a lot of time. And then hopefully find our mill effects, which we can then also replay with Calamity. And then for now, have to decide between playing Mountain to increase our snow count and to keep a basic in hand in case we draw a Snarl. Now that we draw another Mountain, the decision becomes easier. And then keep Pathway in case we need double blue for Hideous Laughter. And it's fine to have one blue source out, opponent on perhaps the Naya Runes deck. Hideous Laughter is a nice one. So I could crush the weak Naturalists. The upside of keeping Crush the Week for later is potentially exiling a Kami of Transients, which can always come back from the graveyard. Uh, upside of keeping Rebuke for later is that it does kill the Runeforged Champion, which the two damage does not deal with. So, interesting spots. Could also wait a turn, see what else they play, and then maybe go for Crush the Week. And then now I can hit his Laughter, since we can replay it with Invoke. And we got rid of a bunch of cards, and Naya Runes confirmed double Kami in exile, so those won't be coming back. And there's a champion. Alright, so next turn we can crush the weak and rebuke to deal with both. Although they might be able to offload some runes first. And then probably better to exile with Crush the Weak by playing it first. And 
Okay. Now burn down the house. We'll buy more time, invoke and replay Hideous Laughter. Still 33 cards remaining, so we're definitely going to need more mill cards to cross the finish line. Alright, there's a land. Still no red mana though. So they're potentially holding a showdown that they're unable to play. So now probably fine to Hideous Laughter plus Crush the Weak for one white mana. I don't think there's any tricks I need to play around. And then keep the basic in hand for another Snarl potentially. And then we also leave Rebuke in the graveyard to maybe deal with a future Runeforge champion. Alright, 70 cards left. So another Hideous Laughter would probably do it. A Rune of Might on their land just to draw. We'll eventually pump the Lair of the Hydra. So that's still kind of a neat interaction with the uh, runes. There's Hideous Laughter. Otherwise burn down the house to make a few 1-1s one -ones would also buy a lot of time. Yeah, Hideous Laughter should be well positioned against a runes deck, which has a relatively low curve and also tends to draw a lot of cards itself, so that kind of plays into our game plan and our sweepers usually able to deal with most of their threats, even if they combo off with like a Hallowed Haunting. There's a red mana at long last, one card left, so Showdown's not going to do much for them. They can't really play any more runes. And we're still at 15, so good luck. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Pretty good balance of interaction, card draw, and hopefully ways to find our mill cards. Kick things off with our dual land in case we draw crab we can maybe get two triggers with evolving wilds next turn up against a red maybe red black sacrifice deck so probably get the tap land out of the way keep up frostbites and next turn we can iteration it is red black I'll take the one from Epicure. And then I might want to fetch Island so we have double blue for Hideous Laughter. And then everything else we can play on red. So we can still cast our Calamity. Bone goes for Deadly Disputes. And Crush the Weak in hand. And I suppose we can play Evolving Wilds to have Triple Snowland active and thin out the deck a little bit more. Since I don't really need to draw more lands. Opponent splashing white as well, potentially for showdown of the Skulls. So this could be kind of a Mardu token deck with wedding announcements. So maybe a slightly more aggressive take on the black-white sacrifice deck as we see Oni Cult Anvil and another Epicure. So they should have a relatively low curve for Hideous Laughter to be effective. Can play Snarl. Do I want to crush the weak here? Can probably take two more. And then I'm still tempted to play Cacophony with Kicker, even though Calamity can replay it a second time. Hmm, maybe I should play Cacophony now, since next turn we can Calamity, maybe replaying the uh, Expressive Iteration to go digging for more mill effects. And yeah, there we see more of the opponent's deck. 
The only downside of Calamity get back iteration is that we won't be able to play a land off of it next turn. So we might be able to wait another turn. Try and keep Frostbite to answer their creature lands, which would otherwise hit pretty hard. So there's multiple reasons to wait. Spider Queen I could finish off with Thundering Rebuke. Alright, so let's rebuke Spider Queen so I can keep the instant speed Frostbite for their creature land. And then we'll crush the weak. How likely are they to fire up Dun next turn, or am I better off foretelling Dual Strike? Probably fine to foretell Dual Strike still. And then next run Calamity, plus maybe the extra land drop from Iteration. Can always replay a Sweeper if needed. And hopefully dig towards a Hideous Laughter, which should be quite effective. I'll take another Invoke Calamity. Cacophony we can kick as well now. It's going to be Florion, which we can also Frostbite. And our opponent can make another token with Anvil. And it also triggers Florion, so a bit of synergy there. Finds a Meat Hook Massacre, which they cannot play. Another Invoke Calamity, alright. So now I'm not too worried about running out of card draw effects, quote-unquote. So, go for Iteration plus Cacophony, I think. Could also go for Rebuke to kill Florian. So I can still hang on to Frostbite for Den, which is maybe the more conservative play. Sure. And then Hideous Laughter in hand. Sadly, the uh, mana's a little awkward here. But I guess I can finish off their token. So did not find a land, which we were hoping for. But now we shut off their anvil at least. And we still have a backup Frostbite for then. Announcements, fine. So we'll Hideous Laughter first, and then we can replay it a second time with Calamity. And we can even dual strike the first one, so... I like where this is going. Anvil's got nothing to sacrifice. I guess they sacrifice it to itself, just to make a 1-1. One -one. Double Hideous Laughter, leaves four cards, and I gotta hope that a Calamity next turn will finish them off. And 11, so Frostbite finally takes care of Den before it turns sideways, and that should be game. Yeah, against these kind of mid-rangey sacrifice decks, they don't tend to apply a ton of pressure, their creatures are small so they die to our sweepers. And we usually have enough time to assemble the kill here. And our opponent explodes, awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We'll eventually need double blue for hideous laughter, but can play an early crab to start milling, couple sweepers for interaction. Up against a lair of the Hydra. Is it mono green or maybe a Naya runes deck? Blank green instead with Innkeeper. Okay, so it should be a pretty mid rangey deck. Which is a good matchup for cards like Crush the Weak. And of course, now Hideous Laughter and Calamity are looking good too. Chariot also gets cleaned up by Crush the Week quite nicely. Opponent's not going to mess around with a Rune Crab, kills it right away. Oh, 
got a backup. Play lands for Tell Crush the Week. And then we would love to just keep hitting our land drops, including finding another blue red dual land. And then Hideous Laughter replayed with Invoke Calamity is going to be great. Innkeeper attacks. Yeah, I think we can probably block here. Can't think of too many 2 damage or minus 2 minus 2 type effects that I would have to play around. Tracker makes a clue. And there's my double blue, so yeah, probably fine to rebuke the tracker here to relieve some pressure. Yeah, our opponent's got some powerful expensive cards, which I'm happy to mill so the hideous laughter doesn't have to deal with them. And then next turn we can Hideous Laughter, hopefully keep hitting our land drops. Crippling Fear kills our crab. Alright, we exiled some very expensive cards, so not the most effective Hideous Laughter. So that's one of the drawbacks of playing against higher curve decks. But those are also powerful cards we now won't have to necessarily deal with. Opponent plays Binding with no target, just to ramp. So yeah, they're starting to maybe panic a little bit. Could Calamity, although don't have a ton of exciting cards to get back, so maybe we just make some 1-1s with Burn Down the House to buy time, wait on Crab until we can play land after. And then wait for another draw effect or mill effect to play Invoke Calamity. Can maybe even start attacking. Although, don't plan on winning the game with damage. Just don't imagine needing more than one devil. And if her opponent is in the activate layer of the Hydra stage of the game, I'm not too concerned. Right, calling a ritual, I guess, cleans up all my 1-1s, one but now maybe the crab won't have to uh, face it. Still quite a bit of mana left over for Spider Queen, which Crush the Weak can at least deal with temporarily. So crab into Crush the Weak. And then invoke Calamity as a leftover. Bonus got 27 cards remaining, so halfway. Wouldn't mind some more card draw effects. Meat hook for three deals with a crab. Yeah, probably not the best matchup to draw triple crab as her opponent was holding a ton of removal. I think I'll hang on to Evolving Wiles on the off chance we draw. I guess there's only one crab left, so not very likely. So maybe I'm better off shuffling. So let's invoke. And then we can replay Hideous Laughter. Plus... A Thundering Rebuke kill Spider Queen. Could also burn down the house to make a couple 1-1s one to finish off Spider Queen, but then we don't get to mill, which seems more important. Alright, 12 cards left, so we're starting to get there. And then we're just another Hideous Laughter or Cacophony away potentially from victory. Another Calamity. I guess wouldn't do a whole lot right now, but Expressive Iteration would certainly be a nice draw. Adversary can make some Decayed Zombies, so that does apply a lot of pressure. There's an Iteration right on time. And oof, three lands. Not what we wanted to see. So, 
Now a Lair of the Hydra becomes a pretty big threat. Meat Hook Massacre also drains us when those zombie tokens die. And Chariots is gonna amp up the pressure, so probably only have one more draw step left. Can we top deck something powerful? Invoke Calamity, okay. So you're saying there's a chance. So we can go for Crush the Weak plus Iteration, although Crush the Weak in and of itself may not be enough, as that still leaves Adversary, Chariot, and Lair. Although I guess it's unlikely for them to crew Chariot, Adversary, and still have one damage because we would be exiling creatures with Crush the Weak, so it doesn't trigger Meat Hook Massacre. So probably still go for Iteration in the hopes of finding some more mill effects. So Crush the Weak, Iteration... And oof, did not find a hideous laughter, sadly, but a couple burn spells. So I can finish off the adversary at least. And then what do we want to put in hand? Thundering Rebuke versus Dual Strike, or I guess I could keep Frostbite in hand, but the instant speed doesn't really matter when their creatures are above three toughness. So maybe Dual Strike in case we draw Cacophony, so that's lethal guaranteed. Adversary down. I'll foretell dual strike. And then... Don't know if there's a reason to play out my land or keep it in case we draw the last crab. Guess if I draw another iteration I might need the extra mana. Which is probably more relevant. Alright, we might get another turn here at least. Spider Queen can crew chariots. So another cacophony of the top. Or Tasha's hideous laughter would do it. And what's it gonna be? Frostbite. Don't think that keeps me alive. Even if I copy it. Kill two spiders, we would still get drained to death by Meat Hook Massacre. Um, I guess I could wait for them to maybe crew. If they don't activate Lair for some reason, I could kill the Chariot with double Frostbite and then only take three total down to one. But I imagine Lair's gonna be turned on. And yeah, there's no way we survive this. Alright, GG's, close game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. We'll need to draw some mill effects at some point, but an early crab can also do a lot of work. And then crush the weak for interaction. Hideous laughter is a welcome sight. And up against what looks like a Jeskai Hinata deck. So they're probably going to have some removal for Crab. But they're not the fastest deck in existence. So do I already want to Hideous Laughter? Given that we have Calamity to replay it, it's probably fine. Although cards like Magma Opus are effective against Hideous Laughter. Alright, putting down to 29 cards already. Get to see some of their cards, nothing too unusual. And our opponent explodes. Alright, that was a fast game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand, a little bit light on early interaction, but a lot of mill and then a burn down the house to maybe catch back up. 
So on the play, I think we can get away with this. We've got our double blue for hideous laughter, so fetch a mountain and we're good. And then hopefully we're not up against a super low curve deck that can kill us before we get to five. Something like Thalia early could also be effective at slowing us down. Red whites. And a battery, all right, so not the start we were hoping for. Probably fine to Cacophony. At least if they're a low curve deck, Hideous Laughter is going to be more effective. Cards like Adelin are terrifying. Redan could also make our Burn Down the House more expensive. And yeah, Thalia is worst case scenario here. Although Crush the Weak to the rescue. So hopefully that can clean up the opponent's board. Spellbinder probably makes my Sweeper more expensive. Right, goes for Hideous Laughter. But Crush the Weak is going to be awesome here. And the fun thing about Crush the Weak in this particular deck is that Hideous Laughter decks often also play with uh, Dual Strike, which is another card that foretells, so the opponent's never sure which card is in exile. We'll wait on Iteration to get a 2 for 1, keep hitting those land drops, and then we can maybe Hideous Laughter as well next turn. Another Spellbinder probably goes for the Sweeper now. Yep. And there's my land. Let's iterate, finding... Let's see, we can put iteration in hand. And then uh, play the crab, play the land. Although the crab wouldn't necessarily be super effective once I'm out of land drops, but I guess iteration helps find more, so sure. Iteration in hand. And then we can play the crab. Could also just play the iteration now. Even if we miss out on a bit of value. Opponent's got 38 cards remaining. So what's my plan? Next turn I could maybe play the expensive Hideous Laughter, or we can play the one from hands alongside iteration. Yeah, I guess we'll wait. Playing the Hideous Laughter from hand plays around another Spellbinder, potentially. And I wouldn't mind hitting more land drops, plus maybe finding some interaction. Okay, Raydan is gonna make this burn down the house completely impossible to cast. Picked up Cacophony. So with 37 cards remaining. We're pretty likely to kill them if I just Cacophony, Hideous Laughter, next turn Hideous Laughter. So I may not need to cast the iteration. Yeah, sure. Could get punished by another Thalia, making Hideous Laughter more expensive. 12 cards left. Crab down. Take 5. And yeah, there's Thalia, so not what we wanted to see at all. Did not hit a land for the turn, so I need to iteration and find some interaction here, otherwise we're dead. Double Frostbite will do. Although we can only play one. Might still be better off killing a three-powered creature here. Although then I might still be unable to cast this Laughter next turn. So killing Thalia is probably still the safest bet. I could be dead to maybe some sort of pump spell. Let's take a look at their deck. They don't seem to be playing the sorcery that adds two counters. But I wouldn't put it past them. There's no creature land to play around. Adeline could potentially provide one more damage. Battery has one more haste damage. And I guess same goes for Luminarch. So 
I guess I can still take six and survive. So I think going for Frostbite on Thalia should be safe enough. Yeah, a Luminarc is six total. Down to one, keeping the excitement alive. Okay, let's hit his laughter, and with 11 cards remaining, this is likely to be good enough, but not a guarantee, so let's cross our fingers. All right, we got there. So unless they've got an upkeep burn spell, which seems unlikely, our opponent explodes. Oof. Yeah, these games with a blue-red mill deck can be very exciting when it comes down to casting a hideous laughter on the last possible turn. So overall, pretty happy with where the deck ended up, and we got to see plenty of Invoke Calamity in action, so it seems like a perfect addition to this deck, giving you access to more copies of Hideous Laughter and Cacophony, which of course are the key cards in the deck. The games we typically end up losing are the ones where we don't find that critical mass of mill effect, even if we manage to interact with the opponent and survive for a while, they will eventually land a threat that we cannot answer, and then they will kill us before we can actually close out the game, but as soon as we find two or three mill effects, maybe get to copy them with our dual strike or replay them with Invoke Calamity, then we can usually close out the game pretty quickly, which is necessary against a lot of creature decks in the format, but overall, I like where the deck is positioned, and seems like the perfect home for Invoke Calamity, and I think it's also better than just playing more copy effects like maybe the Iteration, which we can also flash back, because at least we can proactively cast our mill spells instead of having to hold them in hand, where they're potentially vulnerable to cards like Elite Spellbinder and other discard effects, and so we can actually try and close out the game a little bit sooner thanks to Invoke, being able to replay those mill effects, as well as, of course, just being a nice two-for-one to get back additional card draw and removal. So pretty happy with where the deck ended up. So this is probably a good build for a blue-red mill going forward. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.